Welcome to another chilling episode of Monday Movie Pickup. Okay, starting with the new releases right away, we have Thor Love and Thunder. Uh, this is the 4K edition, which, like I said in previous episodes, I'm not going to convert everything to 4K, but I figured I would start buying the Marvel films on 4K since I do return to them a lot. I will watch the physical media version that I own, so might as well own the best version of it since I do own a 4K player now. Thor Love and Thunder was a pretty divisive film. I think overall people were probably disappointed in it, but honestly, I did really enjoy the movie. I, I A lot more than I even expected I would, and I feel like I'm going to always be the outlier for this film. I mean, right now it's in my top 10 of the year, which I, I feel like it's for very personal reasons, but there's just parts of the movie that really hit with me, but I get why people were disappointed in it. It didn't really do anything groundbreaking. It was a very... At the end of the day, it was a very small movie. I thought it was a very funny movie. I liked seeing Natalie Portman back in the role, and I thought it was a fun time. I, I had a lot of fun with this movie. I thought it was very charming, had a lot of heart. War of the Worlds, and it's actually another Paramount Presents Blu-ray that also comes with When Worlds Collide. In fact, this is actually a 4K disc. Kinda. The only movie that's a 4K is The War of the Worlds, which kinda sucks. I mean, <laughs> I would hope if they're gonna do a 4K edition, they would do both films in 4K. And from reading the reviews of this film, uh, this Blu-ray release, well, just... Uh, and it's actually cool, there is a double feature poster in here, so that is really neat. But honestly, I've read some of the reviews and it sounds like people are mostly disappointed in this release, which has to do with, uh, especially with the War of the Worlds, and apparently the restoration they did was a bit off with the colors, um, especially with the opening scene where Mars is seen as blue. And they tried to address it by saying that, no, the original negative was presented that way, so that's why we kept the restoration with a blue Mars. But then there's been other people that have been fighting back on that, saying that the reason uh, that the negative was blue was because of the process that they did back in the day where it was projected and it would appear red on the screen. So there's a, there's a whole debate on it. If you go onto the Blu-ray forms, it's very interesting. It doesn't seem like Paramount's going to be doing a replacement disc for this 4K edition. I don't know if the rest of the film is as bad as that opening scene. It seems like people are mostly fixated on that and it's something that the Criterion version actually has correct. It does have a red Mars, not the blue Mars. And then when worlds collide, apparently it doesn't have the most up-to-date sound. It apparently has only a 2.0 mix, which a different Blu-ray release has a 5.1, maybe possibly even a 7.1. I, I wasn't, um, I didn't look too much into this film because honestly I wasn't as interested in getting this release as I was in getting the 4K release of The War of the Worlds, but it's too bad that, you know, Paramount Presents um, has started to slow down a bit, and Paramount has started to release a lot of 4K versions of Blu-ray releases they did with Paramount Presents, but they're not doing the 4K release as a Paramount Presents, so I don't know if they're starting to give up on the line. It's a bit confusing, too, because while it's super cool that Paramount has been releasing a lot of movies on Blu-ray lately, they haven't... it's been kind of confusing as to why some get the Paramount Presents treatment and why others don't. I have here another long-awaited Blu-ray release. This is Dracula vs. Frankenstein. Actually, this has been released on Blu-ray in the past, but that is long out of print, so it's very cool that it is out on Blu-ray again. And it actually comes with another film, uh, Brain of Blood, which I know nothing about, but also I hardly know anything about Dracula vs. Frankenstein beyond a review that Cinemassacre did back in the day. Uh, there's also some very cool artwork for the inside Blu-ray case. And, you know, I was interested in seeing the film because I remember one of the complaints about the film was that it just, it looked horrible. The the version that uh, Cinemassacre used to review it looked awful. So there wasn't a good restoration at that time. And uh, it comes with another movie. In fact, it actually comes with this little promo card inside and very rare uh, for movies nowadays on home media. It actually comes with the soundtrack, weirdly enough. Yeah, so you can listen to the original score, the original, and it has the soundtrack list right here. So um, I guess if I want to pop that in for the Halloween season, add some spooky sounds 
to the house. I have some Blu-rays from the recent Scream Factory sale that they did uh, in honor of their 10th anniversary. Here's Bubba Hotep. Uh, Bruce Campbell's film where he basically plays a version of Elvis and very strange, very much uh, the type of role that Bruce Campbell would do. This is essentially like the Bruce Campbell movie. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've, uh, I've been meaning to watch this for quite a while and I figured, you know, I, I bought quite a few Blu-rays for the uh, Scream Factory sale. I did not get them all yet. Um, they even sent out an email explaining that the shipping process is going to be a bit slow since they, it was one of their biggest sales they've ever done. But nonetheless, they had some pretty good deals and it meant I could finish up a lot of collections uh, that I've been meaning to get to. Like I got all the Hammer Blu-rays now. Um, so those will be coming soon. So I have pretty much a completed Hammer collection, at least for the monster films that they released. And then I have here Psycho. So I have all the other Psycho films, but I never got the 1998 Shot for Shot remake, which people have had, look at this disc art, by the way. It's just Vince Vaughn, the man of the hour. Beautiful. <laughs> people view this movie differently nowadays, though, where they're like, it's a weird experiment where someone tries to 100% recreate the film, but in color. So uh, it'd be fun maybe to watch as a back-to-back -back with the original film. I mean, nothing can top the original film, and I don't think Vince Vaughn would make much for Norman Bates, but hey, you know what? That's Maybe that was the, maybe it was a test. Maybe they were like, maybe someone went up to Gus Van Sands and he, they were like, you can't make a psycho movie with Norman Bates played by Vince Vaughn, and he said, I bet. And, well, he, I, I don't know, mixed results. I have here Hannah Montana and Miley Cyrus, Best of Both Worlds concert. These concert movies are very interesting to me. Uh, they, they had a bit of a resurgence between, I feel like the exact dates are like 2007 to 2012. Uh, not just the Disney stars, you know, there was the Michael Jackson, uh, This Is It. Uh, music film. There was also a Katy Perry film and uh, Justin Bieber had one. Jonas Brothers eventually got one so there was just a ton of these for a while and this was the one that it was released in 3D. I was actually looking into this because uh, it's often said that Avatar kind of brought back the 3D format, uh, made it popular again and people have been wondering if Avatar 2 will do that again, make 3D popular again, even though it's never really gone away, it's just died down. Well, the interesting thing is, is that, you know, 3D actually was becoming pretty prominent even before Avatar came out, and Disney especially was releasing a lot of films in their uh, real D format, as they call it. Uh, but this Blu-ray release, of course, does not have an actual 3D Blu-ray disc, because I don't believe 3D, um, I don't think 3D Blu-rays were that prominent yet, and especially Disney was not starting to sell them and even now they don't really sell them unless you're I believe in other territories they will but in the states no longer you don't really find 3d blu-rays anymore so they actually have the red and blue glasses similar to the Friday the 13th set you know this one right here where they have the third film but it's not 3d that's meant for a 3d television with a 3d player no it's just they have the glasses on the inside I feel like these movies were a cultural moment for a very blip of a second. I remember when the first movie came out and it was like this weird sleeper hit. Uh, I was told about it by a friend. We went uh, with my sister and I remember seeing it and not being too impressed by the movie. I was like, I, I feel like the movie already is outdated. Like I already felt like too old for the film. I was, uh, I think I was like junior year at that point. And I, I like movies, you know, similar to Pitch Perfect, but I think just it was the wrong time for me. It was like, had I been in middle school or in elementary, maybe I would enjoy the movie more, but I just felt like this humor doesn't work for me. But it was very popular with the girls, and that makes sense. I mean, the movie, it still has some funny moments to it, but then they kept the sequels going, and I remember seeing the third one and just thinking, hey, it was awful. Um, even my wife, I don't think, is the biggest fan of these movies, but I did see this 10th anniversary set for a very good price. I was like, I don't own the Pitch Perfect movies. Let's just buy them. Maybe we'll watch them again sometime. They have this wonderful booklet that just explains the characters and nothing about the production. So cool, awesome 10th anniversary edition. I hate when they do that. I hate when it's like, ooh, it's an anniversary. And then all they do is, it's the most basic crap 
in the, uh, the extra booklets that they'll provide, you know, that it's like, I don't need to read about the characters. Tell me a funny production story or something. But it did come with a tuner, you know? You know, like the movie? I don't know. Maybe I'll rewatch the movie, the first one especially, and I'll reassess it. Maybe I'll like it a little bit more. But it's funny because, you know, I graduated like less than two years after the first one came out, but I feel like I saw it nonstop because it became like one of the most popular movies uh, with girls around my age. So it just seemed like it was always on. So I feel like I've watched it in the background way too many times, you know. But uh, pitch perfect. It's not bad. Not a bad movie. It's just... I... Yeah. yeah. Well, that was everything for this week, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the video, and special shout out to Lauren, Anthony, Anna, Kirsten, Spencer, Lucas, Ryan, and Robert for supporting me on Patreon. By joining my Patreon, you can get exclusive blogs and videos, and for just $7, you can get your own monthly movie review. I hope you stick around, Cinephile, and have a happy, productive day.